Hey everyone, welcome to week three and four. So you survived weeks one and two, one, one, two. Um, we narrowed down from everything you've tried during your time in the School of Art to what your focus is gonna be. Focus for your portfolio, focus for your career, how you're gonna try to get exhibited in a gallery, hired by some company, uh, attract collectors, clients, whatever your goal is, but we've focused on that. Um, you've done some research, you've found six artists who are working in the space that you'd like to be working in, you've checked out their work, you've looked at their website, maybe their Instagram, you've emailed them, hopefully one of them at least has been willing to meet up with you face to face or by Zoom, and I hope you've already done that. Please jump on Discord and let me know your progress. Um, and then you've also checked out some potential employers, galleries, again, people who could hire you or show your work or whatever your goal is. Um, you've pushed that forward into uh, a, a, just a simple sketch of what your website would be. Um, you've laid out a menu with what the choices will be and you've created a viewer profile, a portrait of one person, a curator at a gallery, an HR director at, you know, um, an ad agency, somebody who uh, can be kind of your guiding star as you put your website together to organize your material that, uh, in a fashion that will speak to them. Now weeks three and four, we have four things to accomplish these two weeks. Um, we want to uh, photograph yourself, photograph your work, write about your work, write about yourself. So photograph your work, uh, some of you already have that, some of you need to get rolling on that. Um, you know, if it's a painting, you put it somewhere with kind of even light. We talk about butterfly lighting, a light on either side that gives it kind of an even light. Take a picture with your phone or, or a real camera if you have one. Um, if, you know, it's a, if, it, if it's a salsa label, I've used this example in my conversations with some of you. If it's a salsa label, um, you can just take a, you know, a 2D Illustrator file, rasterize it as a JPEG and stick it on your website. But to go ahead and print that out, get a salsa jar from the market, soak off the old label and put your label on it, much better. To lay it out with an actual bowl of chips and salsa on a tablecloth, take a picture of that. Um, you're showing a lot more than your label, but ultimately people are not, you know, hiring you because you know how to make a rectangle or a triangle in Illustrator. People are hiring you because you can communicate for them. You can help, in the, you know, in the case of a salsa label, we're talking graphic design, you can help communicate their message to their customers or clients. Um, so the more complete your presentation can be, the better uh, experience they can have of you as an artist, as an art director, as a graphic designer, whatever the case might be. Um, so whatever's involved, photograph your work or get photos of it. Um, try not to, you know, I, I have people say, oh, my friend's a professional photographer and they're gonna be in town in three months, so I'm just gonna wait for that. Please do not wait. You know, there are a million reasons to wait and never have a portfolio and graduate from the School of Art and, you know, not be working in art and, and, and maybe never work in art. So let's do it now. It doesn't have to be perfect. The better it can be, the better. But let's, let's make it happen now. Let's not do photography a month from now or three months from now or next year. Let's get photos of your work. If, if it's in your parents' attic uh, in Northern California or you know, whatever the story might be, let's try to get images of work that we can build a portfolio with that presents you. Okay, that's photograph your work. You also want to photograph yourself. There's two pictures that you want. Um, and I beg you, please do not scroll through your cell phone and find the two shittiest pictures of yourself that you can find. Let's actually take a little bit of time and take some strong images that can present you well to the world. Your photo is like your handshake, you know? If you, if you meet somebody who is a curator at a gallery, an HR director at an ad agency, et cetera, et cetera, you know, if you refuse to shake their hand, that's pretty weird. If you have the limpest, clammiest handshake ever, that's a little awkward. If you squeeze their hand so tight, you practically break their bones, that's also a little awkward. You know, a nice, confident, not crazy handshake is just a really nice way to start a conversation. Do you have to shake a hand 
to meet somebody? Well, no, you don't. And obviously in the pandemic era, everything's all different and messed up anyway. But my point is a good photo of you is a strong, strong way to introduce yourself to someone and a crappy photo, some awful cell phone photo that's from your friend's beach beer party last summer. It's just not a good way to present yourself. Okay, so two images, a headshot and an environmental portrait. A headshot is what it sounds like. It's a picture basically of your head. Uh, and those are super useful because there are all kinds of places where there's just gonna be a little tiny picture of you. So if it's any wider than a headshot, your, your whole face is gonna be three pixels and we may not even be able to tell that you're human. Um, so headshots are great. There'll be places on your own website where you wanna use it. It's a perfect por uh, profile picture for LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, TikTok, eBay, Kickstarter, you name it. Um, and also if you speak, and there are plenty of opportunities to speak, even now during the pandemic, um, you know, not everybody is, is out to get, you know, the president of Pixar Animation Studios. Lots of people would just like someone who can share a few ideas with whatever their group is, you know, the Chamber of Commerce or whatever it might be. So seek out opportunities to speak. When you speak to a group, it's free advertising. You're telling them that you do what, what they need, whatever you might be talking about. Uh, anyway, when you do that, they're going to make a poster, maybe a printed one or, a, or a, a web one. It's going to have, again, a little tiny picture of you. So if you have a nice headshot, it's perfect for those occasions. Headshot, very, very valuable. But what a headshot doesn't do is say very much about you beyond the simple idea that you're human, uh, which is where the environmental portrait comes in, which is you and your environment. So now we can actually see you as someone with paint brushes and a palette and a, and a canvas on an easel or someone working with fiber or someone working with ceramics or a graphic designer working on a tablet sitting at a coffee shop being really cool and understanding the vibe of this moment etc so whatever your space is then I you know realistically some of you may end up taking environmental portraits in your bedrooms and that's okay if that's all you can do but when we see like a little desk shoved up against a wall, it is, you know, we are students, we are beginning, and that's a beginning kind of an image. So even just going to Starbucks and take, shooting across a couple tables and showing you there has a little bit more of a worldly feel to it. Or, you know, being somewhere with your easel and painting, et cetera. But think about creative ways. And if you, if you type into a search engine environmental portrait, and then click on images, you'll find all kinds of really interesting images of artists and other people you know, doing what they do. You'll see a, a, a person who's in construction management and they maybe will have a blueprint or a briefcase or something and a hard hat and there's a job site behind them. When you look at that photo, you're like, wow, she totally is a construction management person. You really make that connection. And the same for us, you know, if you're, if you're a metal sculptor, I mean, show welding torches and stuff. That's pretty, you know, hardcore, sexy stuff. Let's present that, let them see it. Okay, so that's photograph your work, photograph yourself. Our other mission for weeks three and four is to write about your work, write about yourself. Write about yourself is an artist statement. Give it a shot, see what you can write. Um, the stories about how your grandfather gave you a watercolor set and that inspired your life, those aren't necessarily bad, but if you tell them at all, they should be at the bottom of your about me. The top should be what you're offering. Because I don't really care about your grandfather if I'm not interested in what you're offering. So you have to make that connection first. So if you're a gallery artist, talk about you know, what you're exploring in your paintings or in your ceramic art or whatever you're exploring. If you're a commercial artist, talk about how your graphic design or your illustrations or your animation character models or whatever it is, how that serves a purpose, how that helps people communicate what they want to communicate. Um, that's about you. And then about the work, um, you know, we're ultimately going to make maybe three, two, three, four pages of, again, if it's like, if it's a graphic design career, then you might say identity systems, packaging, posters, something like that. Um, so for each of those category pages, identity systems, there should be like a paragraph at the top that talks about your approach to identity systems. And then for the various examples, each picture that you have of your work, 
there should be at least one sentence that contextualizes it. Again, for a gallery artist, you can talk about how much you want to explain and how much you want to leave to them to interpret. But if you'd say a little bit about process, that would help. For, um, for a commercial artist, you should make it clear uh, you know, why you made choices, how the choices you made. I chose this font, I chose this color palette. You know, the choices that you make, I chose a really low key, somber photo. I chose a really bright, high key photo. The choices that you make are to speak in a language that helps your clients communicate to their customers, if that's what we're talking about. So um, write about yourself, this, this kind of about me bio that's that, that leads with the, the, what you offer to the person that's reading, and then write about your work, um, at least a paragraph kind of for each of your maybe three or four categories, explaining what that category is about, what you, what you do there, and then a sentence for each photo, letting us know what's going on in the photo. So um, do your best with that stuff. In, in weeks five and six, we'll have our second round of meetups. I'm available before that if anybody wants to chat, but if not before, then we'll do that in weeks five and six. And try to at least have drafts of all that stuff, and I can work with you. We can open a text editor that we can both type in, and I can work with you on Zoom to kind of refine the text that you write and get something that will work really well for your website. So hope you're doing well. Shout if you have questions. Post anything that you're doing, exploring on Discord so we can all see and interact with each other. Um, have a great week. Talk to you soon.